Recently, a client asked us to create map path data uh, through custom points. And it was actually kind of difficult. It was much diff more difficult than we thought. We wanted to capture, uh, we wanted to simulate the Google Maps API, but we wanted the very particular, um, we wanted it to follow very particular paths. In Google Maps, you can kind of drag custom points but there's no real way to export out those uh, GPS coordinates, um, the latitude and longitude coordinates. And in Google Earth, you can uh, grab the coordinates, but there's no real good way to customize it. So we did this, uh, we, we found a workflow, got this working, and uh, thought I would share, uh, share it here. So we're basically gonna use Google Earth to get the points, um, <clears throat> we're going to format the text in Sublime, bring it into Excel, format it further, and bring it back into Sublime, and then load that into the uh, into JavaScript. So first things first, here's a good case study. Um, so we start here in Kanab. Let's say, so I've done a search here for Kanab to St. George in Utah. Um, the, the, line, the path comes down here and uh, ends up in St. George. Well, suppose I want it to... I want the path to uh, start here, come up to Cedar City, and then down to St. George. There's no real good way to do that and you can get those points. Uh, so here's what we came up with. So we start with the uh, KML file. So I'm going to do knab to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to first, so it's point A to point B to point C. So I'm going to do point A to point B first. I'm going to say Cedar City, Utah. So there's the path plotted. And what I do is I come here and I say uh, copy current search results to clipboard as KML. Copy those. Now I bring those into Sublime. Um, let's see. So I'm, I'm in here and I have a CSV file and I paste this and you'll see here this big chunk of text. There, there's two big chunks of text here. Uh, those are coordinates. We're just going to use the first one. Uh, these KML files give alternate routes or I'm not actually sure what is happening but there are multiple routes in there. We want this first one. Let's scroll down to the end of that first one and uh, <clears throat> we're going to delete everything else but that first chunk. So here we go. Uh, now we see in here, let's scroll back up to the top, this KML file gives us three values. You can see there's three distinct values um, that are repeated. We have our longitude and latitude and then zero. Zero being this depth, uh, the elevation, I shouldn't say elevation, it's the height that this path is above the map. So it's not actual geospatial elevation data. It's just what, how far off of the map. This goes up and over and down, up and over mountains and down through canyons. The, the elevation is changing but this line is always touching the map, so it's always zero in our case. If you were a pilot and you had the line coming up high, that would you know, change, but we're not using that. So in this data, we want to, one, get rid of this string here, and then we also want to have a line break. So we want to replace this string, which is comma zero space. We want to replace that with a line break. So I'm going to hit Command D. That selects a bunch of them. I hit Enter. That's what we want our data to look like. Um, fortunately, doing the copy and paste like that is, is kind of a pain, or, or hitting Command D and selecting each one, but uh, Sublime has a, uh, a quick find. Um, it's called quick find all, so it's Control Command G. So I select one string here, which is comma, zero, and space. Then I hit Control Command G. You can see immediately they're all selected. Now I replace all of those with a line break, and it takes a while. Um, it's thinking, it's, uh, but it, it's going, but it takes a while, so because there's thousands of points. So I'm going to come back into Google Earth, and I'm going to do point B to point C. So I'm going to change this to city, and I'm going to have that go to St. George, Utah. And now you see, then, here's our second leg of the trip. So I'm going to copy this, come back in here, and you see now that the uh, this replace has been done. There is now 3,600 points. It's a lot. And we have more to add. So we're going to paste this in. 
you can see as I scroll up that there's only the one set of new coordinates. So I'm going to delete all this XML. <clears throat> And then you'll notice that this last point and then the first point are identical. So we can delete this one. Um, and then we got to delete this end, the last bit of XML here in the file. So delete that. So there's our file. Now we also need to do this again. Um, there's new data here over in the right. You can see we need to format that correctly. Again, if we don't format this correctly, it will come into, and we import it as a CSV, uh, Excel will uh, import everything into one line. Maybe I'm sure there's a better way to do it. I just don't know what that is. So um, this way it works. So we select that string again. We hit Control Command G. They're all selected. Hit Enter, and we're good to go. So this is the format we want. Uh, we hit, and there's 5,000 points, which is a ton. We need about 200. So we're going to save that CSV, and we're going to go fix everything in Excel. So in Excel, we open up a new sheet, and we do file import CSV import. We import our CSV here, and this is the format we want. That's great. We hit finish. We hit OK, and here's our data. So a couple things. One, the format is we have seven uh, decimal points. That's way too many, so we're going to select both columns. Clicking the column here, go into cells, go into number, and we'll change that from seven to four. And this is much cleaner and simpler. The other thing is Google Earth and Google Maps reverse the longitude and latitude or latitude and longitude. So um, we need to reverse these values to load them into Google Maps, into the API. So we select this column, Command X, and then select this column, Command V, and we get rid of this. So this is the data that we want. We're good to go. This is in sheet six. Um, let's see. Now I'm going to copy this formula because it's faster. Copy that. So pretend I didn't do that. I'll show you what that all means in a second. So here's the data we want. We're going to now create a third, uh, a new sheet, and we will paste this line in here. And we want this to be sheet six. So what's happening here is we're in sheet seven, but our data is in sheet six. So we're saying, hey, we want to offset. Um, in sheet six, we have all these points, but there's thousands of them, way too many, right? We have 5,000 points. Um, we basically just want to get every n number. So we'll put here, we just say points, uh, lines to skip. Just to make it easy, um, maybe two. Hold that so we know that that's there. And then um, we say offset, and this is what we want to offset. We want to offset, offset sheet six at A1, um, and then we want to do row minus one because so it doesn't skip the first one. And then we want to do uh, H1 here. H1, oh, H1. One. Oh, I one. Sorry. There we go. So here's our here's our value, and this is uh, so this is saying go to sheet six and um, offset column A by two lines. So and then we're going to use the same formula here in this column. And we're going to do B1. And there are values. So we can see that it's 112, 5264, 112, 5264, and then this one is 0474. And then we see it's rounding up, so we know we're in the right spot. And <clears throat> okay, so let's do this. Let's drag these down. Okay, let's see that it's working. Now the formatting left, but we're gonna we're gonna do a couple things here first. We'll fix that again. So now I want to get this into array <clears throat> friendly data into JavaScript. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to put an opening bracket, and here I'm going to put a new column and a comma, 
in E, I'm going to put a closing bracket, and in F, I'm going to put a comma. So this is the data we want, and now I'm going to drag these down. Again, we said 200 points, that's probably close to what we want, so let's come down to 200. There's everything we want. Now, we, this needs to go down, this needs to come to zero, this needs to get to the end of our sheet six, or it won't be the complete path. So we need to skip way more than 200, two. we need to do like 200 only gives us 25 points. So we know we're close, so now we do 50, so we do like, let's try at least skip every 50. And that gives us pretty good down to 100, so now we need to do every, let's do 25. Okay, and that's better, 190, which will, which will work. Now we need to format these again. Um, I hit Control, or I hit Command and select the header. We're just going to reformat these. Again, it, the formatting didn't come through, so we do format cells, number, back up to four. And that's good. Now we have our data. So we can ignore these zeros. Um, and again, we just get that till we have about the number we want. And I drag and I command C, copy all that data. Now I come into this, I have this file here, it's a JavaScript file, and I just create a, an array, path equals uh, an array. Um, empty array here. I'm going to paste everything in there. And that's almost right, but now I need to get rid of this tab. So I do Control Command G again, delete. There, tab's gone, and everything looks exactly as we like it. So I save that, and uh, now it's in this path coordinates.js file. I come into uh, some HTML, and I won't go through all this, but this is basically just a, a basic Google Maps example. Um, I center the map here. This is centered on that southern Utah piece. I have this flight plan coordinates, um, which is the, the, I set that equal to the, the path. Um, and, um, and then here I say, okay, great, push all these coordinates, I push first coordinate and the second coordinate into latitude and longitude. And so I save that, and then I come to here, and you will see that. Now we have the path go the, up and around the way we want. So where Google Maps would probably give us this shorter path here, we now have a custom path that we can do with uh, what we want. And now there's no calls to the API in terms of, um, we're not waiting for queries, we're not doing anything now, this is just kind of a visual result. And it's exactly, um, it's very accurate. Uh, it's much lighter because there's fewer points. And you'll see, we did every 200. Here you can see they skip. So if you need it more accurate, you should do more than 200 points. Um, this is now just skipping every other one right here, right? So, uh, but again, for what we were doing, this is pretty good um, and good enough. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, so I guess that's it. And. Uh, there, again, there's probably better ways to do any of these steps, but this is what we came up with, and it worked, and uh, it was a lot of steps, so I thought I'd share it here.